What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self Employed. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to pressure wash wood the right way. I'm joined with a wood pressure washing specialist. Cody, how's it going, man? Man, it's going. It's going. The pollen has fallen, pressure wash oh. community. So uh, I hope <laughs> you guys are ready. Dude, the pollen is crazy, man. I just walk outside. It's like yellow all over the place. It's crazy. It's going to be. It's hot here today. Uh, it's, it's like 80 degrees. So I think it's going to be a hot summer. And, uh, gonna be an early summer so good for washing right absolutely absolutely um so like i said in today's video we're gonna be talking about all about pressure washing wood the good things the bad things what not to do what to do before we get into that though me and cody built out a uh, pressure washing rig building course i say we because i filmed it but cody's the brainchild behind everything with regards to pressure washing equipment so cody can you tell us a little bit about what's in the rig building course yeah we go through uh basically soup to nuts what do you need if you're gonna build your own rig you know so we build rigs that's what we do but we have a lot of guys that they just can't afford to buy one they're going to try to put one together i was just talking to a, a guy that walked in he was showing me some of his picks he's putting one together and uh, if you know what you're doing it's not that bad if you kind of got a good concept so we we go from the what do you want this rig to do and then we go all the way down to material selection tank sizing how to set up tanks um pressure washer selection how to plumb wiring's a big deal we've seen guys you know burn down entire rigs and trucks and vans uh because of poor wiring so we just go through all the hands-on nuts and bolts um all the way down to actually literally nuts and bolts so it's a cool um it's a cool course it's pretty pretty in-depth i think frankly i think it's a great course frankly people <laughs> tell me the course is great i don't say these things people tell me these things frankly i think it's terrific so dude you got one of the best trump impressions aaron's in the wash industry that's for sure <laughs> aaron's trump's a little better than mine and frankly I, i'm still mad about that so i just love the hand motion when you do that because that nails it for me <laughs> so anyway if you guys need any help building out your rig if you're looking to start a pressure washing business it is the uh, rig building course cody's been building rigs for a long time um so check it out first link in the comment section description if you guys need some help with that uh first thing i want to get into with regards to how to pressure wash wood is the opportunity cody i don't think a lot of people realize how much wood is out there with regards to fences there's homes that are built out of wood uh, decks, things of that nature. So can you talk a little bit about the opportunity and the money that could be made doing this kind of service? Yeah. I mean, if you look around, there's, you know, every home's got pretty much a back deck or a front porch area here in the South anyway. And uh, Cedar Shake's a big thing up in the East coast, Connecticut, kind of that area up in there, Massachusetts area. So you got tons of wooden structures, uh, privacy fences alone are like, you know, there's a trillion linear feet of privacy fences out there. So um, lots of wood products, lots of stuff we can clean. Now I will say wood's not my favorite thing to go out and try to clean because it's, it's probably one of the least forgiving if you don't know what you're doing. So it's, it's, uh, if vinyl siding is like our best friend, easy, you know, hard to screw up, wood is going to be further down this way on the, uh, little bit more finesse side, but a lot of potential, a lot, lot of stuff out there that's dirty, that's wooden stained decks, porches, it's everywhere. Absolutely. So, Cody, just, you know, if you can cover the basis for us, man, uh, how do we clean wood if we're if we're brand new to it? Like, what can we do wrong? Um, what are the best practices, essentially? Well, you know, soft washing is all about cleaning and killing or well, killing organic material. So w whether we're talking about mold, mildew, algaes. Uh, fungus issues, which is kind of odd, rare, but uh, gliocapsin magma on roofs, that's a bacteria. We've got all these microbes that can grow on surfaces. So the go-to thing that we use for that is bleach. That's industry standard. Use it every day. Bleach is like our lifeblood, right? Well, when you're cleaning wood, you've got to realize that you're killing all those organic things, but they are sitting on an organic thing, which is wood. So wood itself is organic. Uh, organic based now if it's painted wood then you're cleaning paint but if it's just exposed or if it's uh stained or anything like that then you've got to be a whole lot more careful because you can damage the wood all right so how can you damage it well chemically you can damage it uh bleach on wood is a big no-no um you can soft wash wood okay done it for years you just have to know what you're doing you can you can put bleach on it you just got to be at the right percentage you've got to pre-wet You've got to uh, rinse, 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 rinse a whole lot. And there's even chemicals that you can apply after the soft wash process to sort of neutralize 
uh, the bleach and kind of bring it back down to a neutral pH so that it's not going to continue to damage and eat away at the wood fiber. In the cellular wall of uh, wood fiber, there's a protein called lignin and bleach. Will, I'm sorry, I got hiccups. Bleach will actually attack that protein and it can break it apart. You can make wood look uh, really off colored, white, more white than the natural wood color. So chemically, it you can damage it. Now, pressure is also bad for wood. You don't want to really blast, you know, 3,800 PSI into a deck. It's not a good idea. You want to be low pressure as possible. Sometimes you can put a little bit of pressure on there, but you don't, you don't want to slap even, you know, a yellow tip on a standard machine is going to be a lot of PSI. Another thing we see guys do a lot of times is they're okay on the pressure side. They're using a pressure washer in the one, uh, but stopping mid board, which is sometimes hard to not do if it's a long run, you can see the, the points where you stopped and started at. So you would rather use Kim's and you just got to know how to use them. And then you got to make sure that you soak that wood down and, and rinse it all back off. If you want to go and do it the correct way, um, there's better Kim's than bleach for wood cleaning, which is going to be things like sodium percarbonate based cleaners, sodium. Here's a fun word. Metasilicate based cleaners, metasilicate based cleaners, uh, which are, they're going to clean the wood, but they're not going to attack the wood fibers themselves. So if you've got a soft wash system and you see a privacy fence, by all means, you can clean it. Um, but you just got to be really careful. Okay. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Uh, so we actually go through that in the um, how to wash course. There's a whole section on there on how to clean wood. Um, so if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave a link down, the, down below for that as well. Um, but Cody, with regards to washing wood, there's essentially two things that we could do wrong, right? Furring. Uh, which is putting right. too much pressure on it, right? I believe you touched on fur furring, right? Now, look, I've ran a surface cleaner across really? a million before. Uh, it was at our church camp. It's 30 years old. Nobody cares. It's freaking nasty. It's up under trees. But here's what I did. I throttled my engine down, and I scoshed my ball valve back. You know, I've got the ball valve right here at the surface cleaner. So there's two ways you can mitigate some some pressure. The proper way is to tip it down, you know, to add to install bigger tips, which would bring flow up, pressure down, and you can use a surface cleaner. But don't go out there saying that I told you to surface clean people's decks. It's uh, it's not a good idea. You're, you're probably going to make places where are very visible. You can damage it. So furring the wood is uh, – Aaron's got like a running joke about Ricky Tommy's wood furring and more where, uh, you know, is your back deck really slippery? No worries. We'll come out there and peel a layer off – and sometimes that's what customers are, are asking you to do. We get this a lot. Here's a two by four. Okay. We're in, we're in an office. We build something out of lumber. We never seal it. We don't stain it. We don't paint it. And seven years later, we want the pressure washing guy to come out and pressure wash this back down to um, like freshly looking lumber. I am not about that life because that's just too much of a job and it's, you, it, it's three dimensional. You got all your handrails, you got to do the top, the pickets, the stairs, you know, it's just a lot of work. So we don't like doing those, but um, yeah, you can fur the wood with pressure or you can basically make it look like that wall right there by taking all the color out of it. And that's really bad. If you're on like a cedar shake house or a cedar shake roof and you, you nuke it with Kim, that's a bad deal, dude. Uh, you don't want to do that. There's guys out in Texas. I know a guy, friends with him on Facebook, that does a metric ton of privacy fence cleaning. And that's he basically just does privacy fences. But he goes out and he'll pre-wet them. He'll soft wash them with about a 1% to 2% soft wash mix. Um, and then he'll rinse them really, really, really good back down. Then he'll apply sodium percarbonate as a uh, neutralizing kind of agent. And then he'll go back and stain them. And that he... St does it with a pump up sprayer and the dude's making a killing. Um, but there, yeah, it's a thing. It's just, it's its own thing because like we get guys that come to the soft wash class and they're, you know, we go through the whole soft wash one on one class and like, Ooh, I got a question. How do I clean wood? Well, it's kind of its own class. There's entire courses out there on wood, which we have the wood mastery class. So yeah, just understand you, you're sort of getting into a little niche, it's still in the realm of washing, but you're, it's not like you've left the reservation, but you're in a niche there. Okay, beautiful, Cody. Uh, so, yeah, the, the best percentage for wood then, uh, about a one and a half to two percent? Two tops. We don't like to go above two percent. Um, and, guys, please understand, bleach moves around, right? So 
you never really know what percent's in the tank. We're just going to use the numbers that, that we know because we have to have a number to work off of, but uh, you never really truly know. You could do a test, but it, it doesn't matter. But stay on your metering setup. Stay around two or less. Here, the, One of the keys is to pre-soak. So you want to pre-soak that thing, get some uh, – Justin French is in here. He's got a trailer from us. What's up, bro? Um, Pre-wet that stuff. And then apply your SH. And another another thing is to work in sections. I wouldn't want to try to coat an entire house. Let me see if I can show you guys a uh, a, a picture on my phone right here. Uh, I've got a really good before and after of a cedar shake house that we did some years ago. And it's in my slideshow for training. Let's see if I can find it real quick. So it is doable. Like, here we go, right here. Hopefully, you guys are going to be able to see this, but we see that. That looks really good. Yeah. Okay, so really nasty cedar shake and uh, beautiful golden brown right on the on the left. Now, this was just soft washing. All we did is we pre-wet it. We sprayed it down. We rinsed it off, rinsed it, rinsed it, rinsed it, and then we left it. We didn't put any oxalic on this job, but it didn't need it. That's not a not a have to it's just a good idea to do that so that video is on youtube it's way back on my my youtube channel um and i didn't explain how i did it in the video i just was showcasing doing it and i've got so many comments on that video what an idiot you didn't even tell us how you did it and i was like i wasn't supposed to you could buy the course but uh yeah it's it's doable it's doable was let's uh had some dumb guy say blast that fence for 10 percent bleach oh my gosh in <laughs> That's my way to do it I know who that was, if I'm remembering right, but we have an idiot in our Southeast Soft Wash. So, guys, we've got a uh, Facebook page. It's the Southeast Soft Wash Chemical Experts Facebook page. We just started it like a month ago. I think there's five or 600 guys in there. And I was looking. It's my page, but I don't really go in there all the time. I'm looking through there, and I saw somebody asked a question about wood. And this idiot down there said that comment. He said, Blast it with 10% bleach. It'll be fine. And I was like, what? And I looked at the guy, and the guy's like a notorious industry dummy. Like, he's he's been off the grid. We couldn't find him for years, but he is like a legitimate crazy person. He lives in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, and I texted Aaron. I was like, hey, we should kick this guy out, but we should milk him for comedy before we kick him out because he's giving a bunch of bad info in here. He's telling guys to spray wood with 10 He's like, Spray it with 10% bleach. It'll be fine. Like, no, it will turn into a wasp nest. You you will melt you will melt the wood. Like, here, I'll give you a horror story. I was in the training class one Friday, and uh, Jonathan, my sales guy, was he was running the truck at this time. And he'd been on the truck, you know, eight months or something, and he calls me. He does. He knows I'm in class. He calls me, calls me, calls me back to back. So when I took lunch break, I was like, dang, why is he blowing my phone up? I called him, and he was like, bro, I did a bad thing. He was on a $3,800 house wash, really nice high-end house wash. And cuz house was stucco, so he's on like three or four percent. And he just goes smooth across their wooden front door, pulled all the stain off of this massive 10-foot solid wood door. And uh, we had to basically we refunded the guy the whole ticket. So apologized profusely they still wound up giving us a five-star review i was like i'm sorry my he's a new guy on the truck you know he didn't know what he was doing he knew not to spray wood but he would just had his earbuds in going along and just went right across the wood door and uh it was a very bad screw up so you can you can mess up you can go from having a great day to a not great day and really quickly and that kind of goes into like property protection with regards to protecting wood right cody yeah, you don't want like you do should that. put like pre wet that or cover that or something. So maybe speak to that too. Like, okay, so yeah. this video is all about how to pressure wash wood the right way. Technically, you're not supposed to pressure wash it. Technically, you're not really supposed to soft wash it either. It kind of has its own category of the way it needs to be clean, right? Right. right. Okay. And, and, and having right. said that, you you kind of can sometimes pressure wash it if you're careful. You kind of can sometimes soft wash it, you know, if you're careful. But the right way is like using sodium metasilicate based cleaners. We're about to roll a wood product out in the next month or two, and it'll be probably a metasilicate based cleaner, sodium percarbonate based, cleaner, something tailor made for wood. That's the right way to do it. But, you know, if you're doing a house wash and I'm one of those stupid homeowners, I've got two really nice wood front doors, like an idiot. Um, you're going to have to tape it off. So get you a piece of plastic, you know, and just avoid the, what are the homeowners going to look at? 
the chimney around the back corner or the front door every time they come in it, right? So if you screw up right there, you uh, it, it's not like it's going to be unnoticed. So you want to make sure you're super careful around doors. I, I was doing I was doing this one time like an idiot. Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail in Auburn, Alabama. We cleaned every roof in this subdivision. These are multi million dollar homes, and I'm being lazy. I just knocked over Richard's. Uh, I'm vibrating Richard's desk, and his stuff's moving. But I didn't get the ladder out. I could clean the roof from the ground, so I'm spraying the roof. Okay, I'm shooting this way, and I'm I'm done with this area. And I shut my ball valve off as I came down, and like two little drops went. Doop, doop on their wooden shutter on the house, a window shutter. I just came straight down the shutter and pulled the stain immediately because I'm on a roof strength, right? I'm on 6% and it completely pulled all the stain. So we had to go and, you know, fortunately they had some stain in their uh, garage, a little leftover minwax or whatever it was. And we had to fix it. It wouldn't be, they didn't care, but that was, I felt like an idiot because I'm a veteran and I was like, just got in a hurry, you know, and not be, not thinking, about what I'm doing. So you just got to be super, super aware of what you're doing, what percentage you're on, overspray on wood, not forgiving, uh, cleaning a roof. For example, they don't have gutters on the backside and it's going to drip on a back deck. That's bare wood. What do you do? Well, you got to basically have a guy around there the whole time, keeping that stuff rinsed off immediately the entire time or catch it, divert it somehow. So, you know, it could be an easy roof cleaning, but if you've got some wood around that's, going to be a problem you got to take that into account as well right i have a funny story with regards to uh, us messing up wood one time uh, we went out to do this cleaning and it was uh, have you ever had these jobs cody where like you quote it and you think it's not that far away but it turns out being like a lot farther away than what you first thought it was gonna be anyway we had a house that was just like that we actually it was a new subdivision so google hadn't laid it out properly yet and we went to the wrong house and we started doing a house wash on the wrong property <laughs> <laughs> and then we looked around. We said, this is a brand new home. There's no way this is right. So we double checked the address. We were at the wrong house. So then we go to the right house and um, there was like exposed beams around this front entrance. And we made sure that we watered down two sides of it. But uh, sure enough, after we washed the house, homeowner sent us a picture and said, hey, my exposed beams have like streaks of, you know, just like bleach on them because we didn't we didn't water them properly. So then we had to go back out, sand them down, restain them. And it was only like for a three hundred dollar house wash. So, yeah. yeah, it's we did one one time. It was similar like that. The how the front, you know, and this is the danger of remote quoting, which is why Quote IQ helps so much. Right. It's like I, these people, Roanoke's an hour away from everything. Okay, right. we're basically like the scene in Oh Brother Where Art Thou, where he's like two weeks from everywhere. That's Roanoke. So, hey, I want my house washed. Send me a picture. They send me a picture of the front. It's this little easy ranch house. Like, All right, that's easy. Give them a price. We show up, me and Dusty, walk around back, and it's like, what is all this? You know, it's like the Taj Mahal back there, and they've got this the TV fire pit and exposed beams, recessed can lights, and, you know, tongue and groove wood ceiling. And I was like, oh, my God. So you guys want us to clean this ceiling, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I just need that to be cleaned off. I was like, all right, yeah, you, you make it sound like real easy because it could be easy, or I could test spot it and – find out that I'm about to pull all your stain. So always do a test spot on wood as well. Always do a test spot and you're going to set your test spot percentage of whatever you're going to clean and find an inconspicuous area, hit it and see what happens because some stains, uh, they're not going to react and you're going to be okay. You don't want to just guess that you want to find that out before you go to spray and, you know, 6% all over something. And then you've got a major problem. Okay, beautiful, Cody. And I want to do a whole separate video on, uh, you know, things that could go wrong at properties, like things people need to be look out, l looking out for before the job. Uh, so we'll save any other, uh, you know, big mistakes that we have for that one. Uh, if we were to sum up this video, I think it was a good summation earlier. You can't really soft wash it. You kind of can, but you can't really pressure wash it, but you kind of can. So <laughs> pressure washing wood is really kind of just like a big question mark on it, right? Like, yep. And we don't, ever, we don't advertise to it much at all. It's kind of like, I'll take them when I get them. But to your point earlier, if you get good at it, right, maybe you just found a gold mine because nobody else really wants to fool with it. So you could just become the master of that thing that, and you just dial in your process. You know, it's it's cleanable. It's definitely cleanable. It's definitely doable. We, we do them regularly. I just don't like doing them. <laughs> right, right, right. So I think some big takeaways, though, like you can soft wash. You just got to make sure you pre-rinse treat it 
rinse it, and then use like a bleach neutralizer or some of the other chemicals that you mentioned, right? That's a big one. Uh, using a bleach neutralizer like uh, oxalic acid, you know, can be used on the back end to both neutralize and kind of keep that honey brown natural wood look to the, the wood fibers themselves. So uh, if you're going to get into a lot of wood cleaning, I would definitely recommend to use some oxalic chems to, uh, and oxalic is a common chemical. You can get it in, in on Amazon, but um, use that. That'll help you a lot. That will sort of cover some boo-boos you might make in the, the cleaning process. It'll help you out on the back end. Yep. I love what you said about the test spot too. Obviously do a couple test jobs as well. So that way you don't like, go on a customer's property for the first wood cleaning that you're ever going to do. Right, Cody? Yeah, I, we just did a job yesterday um, for a guy, the guy that cuts our, our grass here at the shop. I used, he used to be a supervisor of mine. And so we were at his house. And I'll show you another another pic on my phone here because it should be right here, easy to get to. But his back deck was like, here we go. You know, that's his back uh, back porch area. And it's painted, but it's just, I mean, it's like slick, super slippery, a lot of algae growth, but it's a painted deck. So we were able to soft wash that, cleaned it up great, rinsed it down, no problem. But, you know, if that had have been basically like bare, bare wood, oh, no, my friend, like it would have been a completely different job. Right, right. OK, beautiful, Cody. Well, thank you for coming on, man, and sharing, uh, sharing this with us. Anything else you got with regards to wood cleaning? Somebody in the comments is making fun of my beard. It said a little like the Unabomber. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if we can say that on YouTube, but without a, uh, you know how YouTube is, man. They're my always... beard is uh is frizzy today, so I do got to. It go looks on. good, dude. You know how trolls are. This dude's name gotta... is JM 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 JM. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, heard this, I heard this one thing. I don't know if it was Gary Vee or somebody was talking about how like. Um, one day everything's going to be connected to the blockchain. So that way no one will be able to comment anonymously. Like essentially your profile will be your profile across all social medias. Like what would social media do like if you could no longer comment yeah. anonymously and you were accountable for every post you made, yeah. right? Well, the thing about the uh, Unabomber was he was anonymous for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, sweet. Hey, word of the day on this one is going to be wood. If you guys made this part of the video, comment down below wood and we'll hashtag your real one. Uh, my name is Justin. It's Forever Self-Employed. And until next time, I'll start and get that money, get baby. Get that money, baby. Peace. Peace.